going to work on this leaf, which is this one here, and maybe eventually I'll get around to doing the rest of them. I don't know. Um, it's really not super important. What I want to talk about today are more the techniques of how to paint it than to go through and actually paint the whole thing. You know, it would just take hours and hours and hours, but I think there's a lot of steps in the middle that might be really useful. So this one is this one, and way over here we have this. So just to finish drawing, I'm going to come in and add this back piece here. And this part, yeah, this part is down here. So I want to add that curl. Now, I don't have to. I could totally freehand it with the brush. Um, but if you guys can see that, I think you can. Then I think that's maybe better. And we just freehand. Okay, and then we've got this lovely yellow vein going right up the center and I know it goes up to about here and then it twists over so I want to come through here with my with my pencil not completely touching but still make that stroke this part will just be like air painting okay so we're gonna go yeah and then come that way and then underneath, because it would connect around, it would come that way. So it's really important, I know that sounds, that looks like a really weird twist, but it's important that when you draw a leaf, that the, the main center, as you twist it, that the main center stays correct. Does that make any sense? Coming through here, let's put a few more on. Um, and this one goes there, and then it comes that way. And there's even, can you guys see that? There's like these lovely little dips between the veins, which is cool. So I'm not doing any major drawing because I don't want to do any major erasing. I just want to... I also think that it's nice when you just do a general outline because too much drawing makes for too much detail and too much detail just makes it really hard to follow. So it makes it hard to play with it and make mistakes. So, for this painting, I'm going to use my mop brush, which is actually, it's a Da Vinci quill, and it's referred to as a mop, depending on which company makes it. Um, I'll also use my triangle brush, because I just love my triangle brush so much. Which is this one from Rosemary. I will probably use also the Da Vinci Maestro size 4, which is the largest Maestro Da Vinci I have in this room. And at the very, very end, I might use... A micro brush. This is 10 zero, which means it's 10 points past zero or point 10, right? Zero point 10. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, let's paint. So the first thing we're going to do is add some water. Now, before we let's back up a little bit, people, let's back up here. I know we're getting a little too advanced. Now. Before we start, we need to think of where our whites are. Preserve the whites. Preserve the whites. So, do you see all these white highlights out here? We're going to preserve them. Yes, we are. And down here, preserve these highlights and all those lovely... Can you see that? Yes, the veins in the center, they're really light. So we're going to preserve those. And the way we're going to do it is not paint on them. I mean, we could use masking fluid. We could. Do we want to? Do we? I don't know. I don't... I don't have a pen. I would have to go downstairs to get a pen. That's simply too much work. We will not be doing that. We're going to do it freehand. Now, if you're new to watercolor and you're like, what? Don't worry, it's not that hard. It just means leave the paper white. So I have my nice big fat brush. And for all those beginners out there, I'll use a small brush because maybe that will make it a little easier. I'm going to wet my brush. And then I want to twirl it. I want to actually twirl my brush on a palette or um, or on a paper towel because I want a good point there. Now, some people say you can flick the brush. That is like the worst idea ever. I'd have paint everywhere flicking the brush all day long. If you hear that scratching, it's my finger on the paper. It's not the brush. The brush is soft and lovely but I like to use my finger as a guide so that I have an idea so I can kind of 
set my hand at a certain point and lock it into place that way. Okay, we've got our, our water in there and it's pretty flippity floppity wiggly. I've already sprayed my paints, my palettes and everything else, but I'll just do that again. And now let's drop the paint in. Now do you see this? This is the problem with teeny tiny brushes. I'm using this teeny tiny brush just to show you so the brush isn't kind of in the way. Notice how many times I have to stop and pick up new paint. We can barely get an inch. And oh, out of paint. Out of paint. Out of paint. Yeah, so let's move to a larger brush. This brush has a little more of a reservoir because it's bigger, right? Actually, it's a lot more of a reservoir. It's a size two. It's 20 times bigger than the other one. Way up here, I have placed the paint without any water around it, and this would be a different technique. This is going to be wet paint on dry paper, right? Wet in dry or wet on dry, depending on who you're talking to. Um, and now I want to come with a, just a wet brush, nothing in there, just water, and I'm going to wet around it. As I tap it, that paint will flow over. And what that's going to do is give me one edge being nice and crisp and the other edge nice and soft. Now if I dry my brush and I come back and then I lift out the edge there, I can get a nice uh, blend. Okay, so so far we have done wet and wet where we've dropped in our paint and then we've done wet and dry and added water to the side to get it to blend out. I'm going to pick up some paint and just come back. I haven't put any water. It's all dry. Oops, almost all dry. Not that one. And I'm going to come back and draw some very fine details. So here's where it might get a little tricky. Now, trying to figure out your sketch, remembering that this center piece here is supposed to be white, that's going to be paper, and the rest is going to be the leaf. So I want to put some water in here, and I want to paint that in so that I'm sure I don't mess it up later. And I'm practically just using dirty water. I mean, there's very little paint in there. And then dabbing in something. Also, something to consider with watercolor is that it's going to dry lighter. So what it looks like now is not what it will look like. It's a mystery. And if you like mysteries, that's fine. But if you are really set on your colors and you're absolutely falling in love with your colors and you're like, oh, it's so perfect, but then it dries lighter. You go, what happened? Yeah. So consider that. The thing to do to get around it is use more paint or paint in layers. The more layers you do, the more it adds up, the more builds up, um, the more 3D, the more realistic, the more depth your painting's gonna have. Layers are a good thing. So see, I've made all these little white spots in here. I went over it with the first coat, oops, and now I've got the same color. I'm just picking up some greeny, messity, muckety color that happens to be on my palette. My palette is a horrendous mess, and I don't know. This is green. Let's see, you guys, just, just for you. Mm, okay. This one is permanent. This one is probably permanent green olive. This looks like a mix of may green and sap green and maybe some earth green in there. That is uh, either a raw sienna, a lemon green, or a lemon yellow mix because I've got the different ones here in this, these spaces and they're all mixed together. And if we look really closely, see how it's really coming apart. The, the actual paint um, pigment 
the stone, the mineral, is really separating and settling and becoming quite nasty. So I could clean this off completely and start anew, or, um, or I can just go ahead and use it up because it looks fine on the paper. It just looks dreadful here. So it's entirely up to you. Now if I add any new colors, I will definitely let you know. Okay, so I've again picked up some paint and I'm gonna just dance it across. I say that a lot. I say dance it across. Now what I mean is, let's put down some water, just loose water. Okay, grab our color and dabbing is dabbing, right? That one makes sense. Dab, 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 dab. But dancing is a little more like, like doing the waltz. Up with a wiggle, down with a wiggle. Now this would be dancing on dry. So it's a random pattern that one or two people might make if they were dancing and you were watching them from, from the top. They just keep wiggling all over the place. But when you paint it on wet, it's going to have a similar, similar niftiness to it, but because it's on wet, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run and blur out. So maybe here it goes up and down, like literally up and down, and a line, and a wiggle, a little half circle, right? Up and down, line, wiggle, half circle, ziggity zag, whatever you want. So I'm not just doing that, because that is a line. Nor am I doing a triangle. No, we're dancing. Now, this is my favorite way to paint, is when my brushes like to dance, like little ballerinas. Uh, you can, you, you need to find your own way. If you prefer doing little texture marks and painting in strokes, um, if you prefer painting in washes and then letting that dry, and then coming back and repainting in washes, you could do footprints and then layer your footprints you could do footprints that aren't even so maybe they're all over the place and this is going to give you texture and it depends what you're doing right so if you were doing um the, the texture on a side of a fruit or something, that might be really awesome. But then maybe you want to do something like that and come back and dry brush over it. So there were so many different ways to do things and I'm going to try to incorporate some of these different techniques of painting into my work so I can show you guys or do specific tutorials where I try to do different things. But for now, we're still doing our dance because that is my favorite way to paint. Which means if I don't pay attention, it's what I'm going to go back to. I think we got the point. Did we get the point? Yes! We did. The other thing I can do is I can make tiny little marks. I'm not using the whole brush. I'm not pushing the whole thing down. I'm just kind of squishing the end in and making like mini footprints. So I want to continue this whole pattern all the way up. Okay, and this is the part that can get complicated because the moment I say, ooh, I have this whole thing to do, then I start doing it fast. I start jumping to it and like, well, let's just... Let's just go do 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 do, you know, and zoom right through. We don't want to do that. Take your time. Put down the texture. It's not like we've got somewhere to go. And if we do, I mean, who cares, right? Relax. So I've got it down. Give it a wiggle. This is kind of like the boogie. Wiggle, shake, shake, wiggle, shake, shake, hop, wiggle, shake, shake. And going up this way, the leaf has bent over, and so I know that this is going to be the same. So I don't want to now make my wiggles go that way. They have to continue in the same pattern that they were already doing. And then going this way. So in this process, we are preserving the whites. Because literally, we're painting around it. If any of you are trying this out, 
um, and you're following along and painting along with me and you have a finished painting, there are a few places you can put it. One, you can put it on my Patreon community wall where I can see it and there I will critique it. I want to start doing a little bit of critiquing where I post your work on YouTube, feature your paintings, talk about what I would do, what you did right, where you could have improved, um, and not in a hard way. This is really, really gentle, loving, sweet critiques. <laughs> Um, additionally, you could pl you could post it in on Facebook in World Watercolor Group. I think we have 10,000 members now. It just started in July and it's gotten really, really big. Um, and if you do do that, don't forget to tag me. You can either tag my my Facebook page, uh, Learn to Paint with Scarlet, which will soon be Watercolor with Scarlet Damon, or sorry, Watercolor by Scarlet Damon, or you can tag my uh, me, myself, my personal, uh, which is Scarlet V. Damon. Either way, I'll see that you posted it. Everybody else will see, you know, and if you say, hey, this is a piece I did from a tutorial by Scarlet, it's just cool, because then I know, and everybody else knows, and we'll all come and give you a thumbs up and tell you how great it looks and all that good stuff. I've gotten to the end. I might go back to the bottom and do it again. Now, what I would do differently or what I am doing differently, is if you notice this dark color doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. It could, right? It could go all the way down to the bottom, but I think way down here, I think this color is a little lighter than the end. So let's say I just lighten that up using some of this other guckety green. And I'm just going to add a little bit of texture way down here. Now, if you're looking at this going, hold on, how come the bottom is different from the top? The reason is because that part I filmed um, a few hours ago, we are working on a new channel trailer for Watercolor by Scarlett Damon. And um, I needed to start this piece so that my husband could film me uh, you know, getting the close-ups and stuff of me doing it. So that's why it looks different. It's not that, it's not really on purpose, it just happened. But it doesn't matter, I'm going to fix that. So these, actually it's great because now you can see two different ways. Here we have the spaces in straight lines, the white, and here we have it spotted. Just like liney art and spotty art. Spotty art doesn't sound so good though. So now I want to go to the other side and maybe do that again. and add a little more dancing. Just right here, be careful not to go over. I'm drawing in a little bit of a line there. Okay, so I wanna, I'm just gonna go right over top of those white spots. But, again, because it's just dancing it in, not so much blotting, but dancing, wiggling. Um, it's not going to be completely covered. So the light will still shine through. And this is really light paint that I've got here. The other thing is this is all splotty, but over here I've added the colors in while the whole thing was wet. So we can do that too. Let's do that on this new leaf. So I'm going to get a larger brush. And I just want water clean water. And I want to come back. This top part is bent over. So we're dealing with that leaf now. So the top. Let's add this brown in because it's this beautiful brown. Coming with straight water. And again, I'm going to leave lots of gaps. And I want to just put the water in lines, similar to what I've been doing, but longer strippity lines. Let's do that again. Okay, so I'm going to do this again for you just to show you what it looks like here. This, we're going to imagine, is this. And let's come in with some dark color. 
So this is completely dry, which is the same thing I'm doing here. I've just tinted the water with a dark paint, okay? Please forget that it's tinted just so you guys can see it. And I want to, easier for me to paint on this side. Um, so I'm laying out the water, leaving lots of gaps. I would use more water. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, now the idea here is before, before the water dries, okay, that is kind of the texture that I'm doing over here in water. Now, funny enough, this one is still wet. Pretty cool. So let's clean my brush. Come back with some clean water. I want to make a little point on that. Let's just do that again. Okay, it's the same thing. It's got lots of little white spaces, even though you guys can't see it. And then I'm going to come with a color, oh, like a yellow whichever yellow we're using. I'm just gonna drop that. And because only certain places are wet, it's going to bleed and spread out in a very mm, organic way. So now I'm dabbing. Dab the paint, dab, 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 dab. Lots of dabbing, more dabbing. Um, way back here, I think I want a little more color in there. And maybe some here. Just drop it in, drop in the colors that you want. At this point, if you wanted to make it totally crazy, like all wild colors, you could do that. It doesn't have to be uh, a replica of Mother Nature by any means, or of this specific piece that we're working on. Okay, that's pretty good. This is gonna blend out. Some of these spots, the paint's on really thick. It's gonna stay darker, like this. Other places, it's gonna get really thin, like that. Now, I could leave it like that, and then I could come back with another layer of paint, and I could layer them that way.